ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third episode of the Stuck In podcast. Today I'm joined by my second guest and a guest that I'm very excited to to have on the podcast, Ricky Kimura. What's up? What's up? My man right here is Singapore ver- the Singaporean version of Drake, in my opinion. You know, he's got the beard, he's got the looks, he's got the character. He stands at 1.9 meters tall. He's like a that. keeper on and off the pitch. He's amassed seven SPL appearances at the tender age of 22. For a goalkeeper, I would say that's quite impressive. And how, uh, he's many, also how many have you got? I've got nine appearances as of uh, the most recent game, I believe. Also, I just want to let everyone know that my uh, transfer market value has gone up. <laughs> so uh, I'm gassed about that. So uh, just saying that Jared's probably, probably you know, he started off SPL a little bit more later than me. But right now, he's his trajectory is kind of going on an exponential value of going up there. huh? Uh, you and me both, brother. We're on the up. We're on the up. No matter what. No matter what. Sure also, what. I want to let everyone know that's listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or watching on YouTube that we are really, really happy to have a guest and an audience for the first time. We're joined by Champion, a good friend of both Ricky and mine, in the in the, in the studio in the audience to to help us out with any anything we need. Shout out Champion Challenger. Exactly. So to get things started, get the ball rolling. I want to ask Ricky to explain to to the viewers and the the listeners at home how we met. Uh yeah. So thanks for having me on, Jared. You know, my it's pleasure, an honor pleasure, actually, right, pleasure. for me to be here, <laughs> sitting next to you. So actually, you know what? Crazy story, right? So we, w- I first met him, I think was it 2020 during covid yeah after right yeah. after covid right it would be an end of 2020 right and you know we we joined this uh this little gym gym thing uh edge of the box you know shout, shout out, rory. out rory edge of the box right we were the pioneers on it right a little bit the ogs so i come to i come to one of the gym sessions on sunday uh and i see someone sitting outside the gym and it happens to be this little hong kong chinese guy <laughs> right just sitting down there right and i'm like i'm like uh i'm like hey yo, what's up and he's like, uh, what's up? And he's got this, like, cocky, arrogant, cheeky, cheeky little, like, like. I didn't know I had that. Oh, what's up? Oh, my name, my name, Jared. I'm like, oh, where, <laughs> where, where are you from? He's like, oh, I'm from, like, Ireland, whatever. I don't know. To be honest, I kind of don't even know what your whole thing is. Right? Yeah, You're, like, right, Chinese, right. Irish, Singaporean. Yep, yep. Probably got some Indian in there as well. I don't even know. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, so we met up. And, uh, yeah, at that time when we first met, uh, I was uh, in Sailors. Right. Yep. And you were you didn't have a club. I was a nobody. I was you nobody. Were, you were in an S. Right? I, was, I was an army boy. And uh, I remember he had this this mindset, right? That was like, it was like if you keep working hard, like you know, like we'll get his way. But he was like feeling really down, cause like yeah. he really wanted to get into an SPL club, right? Yeah. No. At that time, like I I've been training with Harris and Raihan for a bit. You know, I think, yeah, I think that was it for the SPL guys at the time. I think Zam and Scott as well a yeah. little bit. Shout out you guys. Yeah. But um, no, it was tough because, you know, I came from overseas and it was it was something new to me and I really wanted it. I wanted it bad. And I think you when you joined the group, it kind of added on top of that because yeah. you were hungry as well. You know, you were with right. Sailors, but at the same time, you wanted to play, you know. I think and it, was, yeah. it, was, it wasn't easy to get to Sailors either. Like, we, we can get into that a little bit later. I know the journey to get there yeah. after Warriors was tough. Yeah. No, nah, but yeah, like you said, you know, when when I first met you, like you didn't you didn't have a club, and like if if you were like if we met each other right back then, and I would tell you like two years from now, bro, like we'd be sat here. You nah. know, I'm not gonna lie. That time when we were at uh, when we were at AFF, when yeah. we were at Cambodia, yeah, and I don't know, I I know you already had like international games before that, right? Previous that, but like, that was the first time that me and you like shared, yeah, shared like an international yeah. stage together, right? Yeah. And like when I was like when we were at the warm ups, I don't know if you remember at the Cambodia yeah. at the stadium when we were just like standing next to each other, I was like, bro, like who would have thought like two years ago? Exactly. You had you had you were in NS and you were like down and you were like oh, Nobody man. in Singapore knew who I was exactly, in terms of bro. football. Like like fuck everything else, just like on the pitch. Yeah. Like nobody knew who, and who I was. And that game yeah. you and, and and we were sat next to each other and like standing there, right? Like yeah representing our country and honestly bro i felt so proud for you and like i felt to be honest i felt i felt so so proud of us no i'm I'm dead serious i felt so proud of us because because and i think like a lot has to do with like just hard work man it's just hard work it's hard and you know like right now like look at you podcast all this stuff right i'm doing a bit i'm doing a bit bro you're a starter in young lions and i'm i'm saying bro like Watching you from back then to now, like it's, it, 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 I'm, I'm so proud of you. It means you know? a lot, man. Honestly, I'm like serious. you and I know how much work we've put into to our craft to to get where we are. You know, I think it hasn't always been smooth sailing. You and I know that. You know, yeah. I mean, the perfect story. I, I mean, I'll tell it. You and I were out. You know, yeah. we, you know, it's part of football. You know, you can't sure. you can't be on 100 percent all the yeah. time. You have to sometimes take some some time off. And I wasn't even with Wyo yet, yeah. so 
I mean, my focus probably wasn't a hundred percent on football at the time. Yeah. So I mean, I was out. You know, do it. Actually, can I can I say the story? Yeah, go ahead, man. You so tell, you tell, give your POV. I'm gonna tell the story. POV. All right, so. So uh, we just, uh, you know, we, me and Jared, we go every Sunday. Every Sunday we go to this gym session, right? And we, we bust our balls out and we get tired and we throw up. Champion knows he threw up that one time when he was there, right? All right, shout out Rory, right? So every Sunday, every Sunday we go out, right? Yeah. Like, and to the gym session, Sunday morning, early in the morning, right? So Saturday we're out, right? Uh, I don't know where. Uh, to be honest, I can't disclose any information, right? We were out. But we were out. That's all we were matters. out, right? So. So I happened to see Jared Saturday, right? And I think it happens to be like I think it was quite late. It was probably twelve or one, right? Yeah. And I see him like, hey, yo, what's up? Hey, you, you, you're coming tomorrow, right? You're coming tomorrow, right? And he's like, yeah, bro, for sure. I'm, you know how Jared is. Yeah, for sure, bro. I'm coming. You know, like you know me. I'm gonna see you there. We're gonna work. We're gonna grind. We're gonna do all this, <laughs> right? Right? And I'm like, all right, all right, you know, what? I'll see you there. I'll see you there. And over there, like where we were, there happens to be like another SPL player. I'm not going to mention who. There was one or two. There was one there or was, two. There was one or two SPL player there. And that time, Jared was not in the SPL. So there was there was a few SPL players there. And um and I and Jared was like, oh yeah, what's the, there's the SPL player over there. There's the SPL player over there. I'm like, oh, yeah, cool. All right, I'm gonna see you tomorrow, right? Rory, uh, where's this one North? Yeah, one fit. You fit. All right, I'm gonna see you there, right? Next day shows up, tomorrow morning, he's not there. I'm like, what? <laughs> where did this brother go, right? <laughs> like, Disappeared, bro. I'm disappeared. like, where, where did he go? So, I, obviously, I go through a session, and it was another one of those, like, tar- tiring yeah. sessions. They know? always are. They always hey, are. Anyway, if you guys want to join Azure the Box, man, I'm just Shout saying, like, yeah. you, y'all going to, like, die if y'all go there. It makes right? a difference. It makes a difference, It's some guys. crazy, crazy fitness stuff, right? So, he's not there, right? And after training, I'm thinking, what? This guy is lying to me, right? He's, he's telling me he wants to work hard. He's telling me he wants to make it in the SPL. He's telling me he's willing to put in all this work, right? Right? But I don't see him Sunday morning, right? That's like, that's one point. So I go up, I text him. I text him. I said, yo, Jared, what happened? Bro? Like, you said you were going to come come, come today. And like, where, where, where were you? And what happened to all that driving all that? And he goes and tells me like, you know, Ricky, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, my mental health is kind of down. I don't know if you said that word for yeah. word, but that was... But it was something along those lines. Yeah, he yeah. goes, my mental health is kind of down. And to be honest, you know, after going out last night and seeing some SPL players and seeing that the amount of work they put in is not relative to the amount of work that you put in, yeah. right? You start feeling down. You start thinking like, you know what? It's not worth it. Like, I was just like, it's not worth it's it. It's not worth it. And like, guess what? I, like, I You know, I told him and, you know, afterwards, I think I think he like changed. And like, guess what? Like a few years later, you're the one that's starting more games than them. Yeah. You're the one that's in the national team other than them. And that's you know, crazy, bro. And you know what? When you put it, when you put it like that, honestly, it's crazy. bro. Yeah. Now who's the one that's you know out there and like who's the one that's starting every single game and that's you, bro. And honestly, dude, as, as honestly up to you. But you know what? I'll be honest. He did not give me credit for that, right? Because, because. All, right, all right. I just want to clear this up. Rory did a little <laughs> documentary esque piece, and Ricky thinks that I should have shouted him out and given him all the credit. And obviously, behind the scenes, I do. He knows yeah, that, but he obviously he wants it in front of the camera. All right, all right. But that's fair enough. But honestly, uh, to come back to that story, like. From that moment forward, I think like we we reached a new level in our relationship because you kept me honest when yeah. when nobody else really did, you know. Like obviously, Rory was there and and other guys were there for me. And I remember messaging him. I told him I was sick. You I wasn't sick. Fu- I wasn't fucking you sick. sick. I just wasn't feeling you it. You know, like I felt like everyone else was was ahead of me when they weren't putting in the same work, and I was just frustrated. And I mean, like you said, look at me two years later. Look like, at you, I'm telling you, bro. I, I put in the work and I, I stayed I stayed I guess loyal to the grind as people say and like uh, I. It's starting to, to to pay some dividends, and I and I'm finally on in a place where I'm happy and I, I can keep pushing. And I, obviously, I'm never satisfied. You and I know this that you can never be satisfied in in, in what we do. But no, it was a it was amazing, amazing like moment in our in our friendship. And even like looking back on it, I I can't believe that that, that happened like just two years ago. That was literally just it two was literally two, two, years, two ago. years ago. But yeah. like that brings me to my my thing. I see how tight you are with your boys champ here yeah. Iksan Raihan everyone no cap like you, you're you just a social guy and you know you keep everyone honest and you treat everyone the same way how important is that to you to like have your boys around you and just to be like in a good environment all the time you know a positive environment but also an honest environment where like you're willing to, to, to pull someone aside and be like yo you're not doing enough or have your boys pull you aside and be like yo you need to do more yeah. how important that is that to you Yeah, I mean it's no secret like you see you see all my friends right they're doing big things bro Yeah, you see Iksan God, like, <laughs> he's probably the best striker right now, right? In Southeast Asia, yeah, yeah, you see there. Raihan, man just signed for a Thai, Thai team too, right? Exactly. You see Jacob, I know he's toys ACL, but he's the captain of Young Lions, right? Exactly, he's, a, he's, <laughs> he's up next, he's up next for big things I'm telling well. you, bro, and like right now, like maybe I'm not I'm not there right now, you know, but like... But it's, the mind, it's a mindset I'm telling you, what, well, if, right? what if, like, I don't put in the work? What if I don't put in the work? I'm for sure not going to make it, right? Yeah. But, you know, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of... Uh, I'm telling you, the people that you surround yourself with, I'm telling you, I, it's, it's, not, it's not coincidence that... 
Mm. I'm close to you. I'm close to the champion. I'm close to the Ixan. Because you guys are the ones that inspire me. Like, you're the ones that make me feel like, I see them do it. So I can do it as well. Right? Yeah. Even though, even though sometimes I, I, I get like, I get, you know, like people like shoot me down and all that type of stuff. But like seeing like fruition, like labor comes in fruition. Like it's like, wow. Like it's yeah. so definitely people that you surround yourself with, I think it's crazy. And like, uh, my boy Chem always says that you sur- the people you sur- who you surround yourself with that that's who you're gonna be. You know, if you're yeah. if you're hanging around with a bunch of a uh, bunch of like people, troublemakers, and yeah, people troublemakers, no good, yeah. yeah, you know, you're probably gonna be like uh, probably gonna be one of them. But yeah. you know, I spend my time with people that I feel are gonna make me better. Yeah. You know, and that's 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 just the person I am. I don't know if that's wrong, but uh, no, no, day, I I think at the end of the day, you know, like that's that's who I find comfort with. In, in any part of life, you know, regardless if you play football, if, if you're a student, whatever it is, if you don't surround yourself with people yeah. that, that push you to be your best, but also yeah. people that know when to push you and when not to, they, they need to know how to work with you. I think that is, is so, so important. And you know what was important? I think edge of the box was f- so important for I think us. It's, a, it's a mindset change for us. Because it was, it was a place where all of us had the same mentality. I think a lot of us got closer through it. Like, even for me, I met Champ basically through edge as well. Like, yeah. even though he's not a footballer, it's just a place where, like, you know, we had that mentality where everybody wants to be the best at whatever it is they're doing. Yeah. And, like, you just push each other to, to work harder. You know, we're motivating each other. We're shouting at each other. Yeah. We're, like, just getting each other hyped up Honestly, all the time for yeah. anything. It doesn't matter. Like, and that's how we all, you know, got successful. And it's how we're going to be successful because we keep each other honest, I feel. I mean, hopefully hopefully we do become successful. We will, no. I mean, I have faith in you, brother. Going Going forward big things are coming, yeah? Yeah, yeah. all right, hopefully. For, for all this hard work, you know, you got to have some shit off the pitch, you know? <laughs> Life, life, life can't be a hundred percent all the time. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta take it back. Yeah. And like you said, you're really, really close with your boys. I know recently you were in in Bali with your boys. You want to talk a little bit about that? How, oh yeah. How important it was to get some time off, get some time away from from football, and and just refocus on and, and reset. You know, how was that? Yeah. So I, I went to Bali with uh with a few of my boys and you know champion over here as well. Yeah, we had we, it was a good time, just relaxing. You know, uh, I kind of let myself go a little bit over there. <laughs> But it's because I'm going to NS and I feel like, you know what, I might as well enjoy it because I'm like going there for two years. So I just kind of want to It's going to be hard. It. Yeah, it's going to be hard. And after seeing your little blogs about NS, yeah. it makes me feel like <laughs> I want to go to NS. So I'm yeah, going to enjoy all my yeah, time right exactly. now. Everyone's going to have a different experience. But yeah. Yeah, no, I know. I mean, it'll be good. It'll be good. Hopefully. Yeah. I mean, it's cool. It's calm. It was fine. It's so, fine. you know what? That trip was special, you know, because for me, you know, being here and some of us, we knew we knew what went into that trip. We know you guys had some had some fire stuff on the ground. It will come up here on YouTube. Oh, the little PJ, the nice villa, oh. different stuff. Let's talk okay, a little bit okay. about that. Yeah, no. Um, so one of our friends, uh, shout out Kaden, right? So he he managed to hook us up <laughs> on a, on a private jet. So if y'all see my Instagram, that's not my private jet. Uh, I just one day, one day it'll be his. One day, inshallah. So that's 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 a private jet that my friend has. So I can't just stick the gram on it because you know, like I, I had to, right? Yeah, if you're on a PJ, you gotta get the gram. Right. So the I'm there. You know, we went we we went on this private jet. It was crazy. Went uh, after we went to this private jet, we stayed at some amazing villas. I was there with Jacob. Uh, and I was there with Champion and Caden, and uh, you know they were all like we, we just had like a good time together. And at the end of the day, I think afterwards we I went to Jakarta for a while, and I met some of my um, I met some great connections there. I met uh, I met this guy who uh, who is who is like an ex national basketball player in in Indonesia, in, in Indonesia and like uh, he was my neighbor. Like he was my neighbor when I was young, right? When you and lived in Indonesia, yeah. And his dad is like the director of all the crazy scary movies. Anyway, it was just <laughs> it was just crazy. And I, when I went there, I met I met like some pretty popular people as well. Like it was just good connections overall. But you know, it was just a good trip. And I'm going there again, uh, Fourth of July. I think next Monday. Yeah. About to go there, bring my mom out. You know, for all the hard work that she put I into think that's, me. I think that's 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 so yeah. important. You know, like I mean, I love my mom. I love my, my both my parents. I know you do too. Yeah. I think everybody that really really has a good support system knows how important family is honestly i think they keep us grounded you know like your boys can sometimes probably get ahead of you i think honestly you know they gas each other up but i think your family is the one that really keeps you grounded yeah. reminds you that you know because they've been there since day zero for real they've seen everything you yeah. know and they will always know what you need what you don't need and i think that's so important and, and i think people need to sometimes like take a step back and be like Shh, damn that my, my parents honestly. been doing this honestly yeah honestly you know what my mom like 
She's the craziest SPL fan in the world. I swear. Bro, my, my mom has started watching SPL games that I don't even watch. And I'm like, bro, I, I'll come home and she'll be like, did you see this game? I'm like, what? exactly. Why, bro, why were you watching yeah, this? Yeah, sometimes she'll be watching like, like I don't know, like some of the boring games. I'm like, <laughs> like sometimes watching like Albrecht's play is so boring because they just pass a lot. Yeah. You know? That'll be Albrecht's versus like, like Tampanese. Like they yeah. both pass a lot and it's like possession. It's like, I, I can't, like it's so boring to watch, you know? <laughs> right? And it's like the final score is like 0 0. And like she's like, bro, my mom is the craziest SPL fan. Sometimes the games, there'll be like five games in a row. Yeah. We have like three laptops going on, one on the TV, one on the phone, right? And she's watching every single game, bro. And like every single time when there's a national game. So for example, that C Games. Mm. And and I didn't I didn't get selected yeah, for C Games, right? And and we were watching it together. And like my mom was like, like she was like, oh, I wish one day you're there. And every yeah. time there's a national team game, she's like, I wish you were there. No, but that's that's it's, it's obviously she's she's so aspirational for you because she loves you and she wants you to do the best. But she also knows that that's what you want, right? Yeah. And yeah. I'm sure hearing yeah. that for you is like, fuck, I really gotta make it. Like I want to get yeah. there. I want to make her proud. And one Bro, day she'd be sat know, in the stands and seeing. I feel like me. you're you're on the same page as me. You no, a hundred percent. Yeah. Like. I feel so much pride when my mom tells me, like, tells her friends, like, oh, my, my, fo- my son plays soccer. My friend plays football. Yeah. Oh, it ma- and, she, and she, the smile that she has. Oh, it, it makes me, it makes me. Because, like, <laughs> your mom and your, your parents and your family being proud of you is, I feel like it's one of those feelings that's just ir- irreplaceable. Like, For you know, when you see that, like, little glimmer, yeah. that, that little smirk, that little smile, anything when they, when they, when they mention it, it's just like, damn, mm-hmm. like, that warms your heart and it just motivates you, I feel like. Yeah. Do you know when I was in America? I was uh I played I played football for my high school team. I didn't make yeah. the varsity. I was in a junior varsity team, okay. right? Uh we had games that was at Florida and we yeah. stayed at Georgia. So it was the twelve hours ride to Jesus. go there. My mom would wake me up at six AM to drive me there, watch us lose like seven zero and drive us back. Right? She will wake up she wakes up every single and you know Ballester training? Yeah. We, our training's at, at six forty five. Yeah. So I gotta wake up five thirty. Yeah. She wakes up and makes me breakfast like a Still. full full course breakfast yeah. every single morning, bro. I'm oh, sorry. Every yeah, single yeah. full course full course breakfast, bro. Every single morning, right? Damn, that's crazy. When I come back from training, there's food over there. Yeah. At night she cooks me dinner. But yeah, I'm no. telling you, right? There's food on the table nonstop. I, I don't know how else to pay it. Like she last time used to pay for me to play football. Yeah. Right. And like I can't wait for the day. Like, you know, honestly, I've hearing hearing stories like my my, my mates at like Irfan, except yeah, the, right? boys, the way yeah. they they repay their parents, right? Yeah. I just can't wait for the day when yeah. I do that, you know. You know, you know when you put in that hard work, the rewards will come, and you can repay those that have been with you since day one. No, I I to the point you talk about your your mom always being there, waking up early, the yeah. the, the, the driving you to places, the food. Yeah. Like I I I feel that a hundred percent. You know, well? my mom's always been there. You know, she was the soccer mom. You yeah, know? Oh, she you was, know, mom, she was. My mom had the minivan as well. Hey, oh, okay, let's go. Yeah, exactly. Right she was getting the other kids in there. No, I mean, like my mom has been there for every single game she needed to be. Every single moment I needed her there. If she's ever needed to drop me yeah. something off, I forgot shit. I forgot a pair oh, of socks for training. I forgot this. I forgot that. I, I I hit her on the phone. She straight away, okay, I'm coming. Oh, like th- that, those sort of things. Like I feel like in the moment, and when you're maybe you're 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 younger, you yeah. don't you don't realize, but like long term like big picture that shit adds up and like it just shows how much they love you and how much they care for real for real yeah, so shout out your mom shout, shout out your mom, mom. shout out everyone's mom. shout out champ's <laughs> mom. Shout, <laughs> shout, shout, shout out everyone's mom uh, georgie <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so you talk about how proud your mom is of, of where you you are at now i want to talk to you a little bit about your SBL career so far you know like we mentioned you started with warriors yeah. you know you yeah. you were 19 at the time you know for a keeper that's that's crazy young to be playing yeah. any games at all, let alone be be the first team. You want to share a little bit about what it was like, you know? Okay, they they're now no longer a team. Yeah. They potentially coming back next year, I've heard. But uh, you want to share a little bit about your time there and and how you got there. Yeah. Because like you mentioned, you lived overseas as well. It's not yeah. been a an, an easy ride for you yeah. in Singapore so, football. Uh, I I remember when I was at Warriors, uh, I was that like um, excited, stupid young keeper that just wanted to make it big, right? So yeah. I felt like I was ready every single game, right? So. Uh, one of my coaches back then, uh, Coach Levy, saying like I would tell him like you know like I'm ready, I'm ready, you know I want to do this right. And the the keeper that was ahead of me was Fasha Iskandar, uh, yeah. who's the touch keep uh, touch about keeper right now. Yeah. By the way, I got a crazy story about Fasha. Yeah, like, we, we, we can okay, talk, okay, we can okay, totally yeah, talk yeah, about yeah, it, right? Come, come. So, uh, yeah, so there were, there were times where like uh, um, you know I'll, I'll be so excited to play. And and to be honest, the goalkeeper coach had a lot of faith in me, right? Yeah. For a young keeper, I think he liked like, my height, my determination, my aspiration, right? Yeah. So <laughs> I I played. Right, <laughs> and my debut game, I conceded five goals. Okay, but I mean, no, it's not no, okay. No, it's not okay. I, I, I did actually quite poorly that okay. game, right? And, and at that point, I realized like, like wasn't it, it wasn't at that point that point I yeah. played another game and I conceded another five goals there, right? Jeez. So, I realized like, 
uh, I was not ready. Like, I was not ready, right? So yeah. I realized that sometimes I can be a little bit too impatient. Right? Yeah. And then after that, uh, there's been a lot of times where I played, and I, there's some games I did quite well, right? Yeah. Uh, anyway, to go back to his Fasha story. Yeah. There was a time in Warriors, right, where uh, we had a game against uh, Tampanese, I think. Yeah. Right? And I think Fasha reserviced or injured or something like this, yeah. right? So the whole week, there was no other keeper except for me. Yeah. Right? So I'm thinking, okay, you know what? I'm going to start. start yeah. I'm going to start against Tampanese. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to show. I'm going to show that. So I was up. this before you made an appearance yet? This was, I, I think this was, a few, to be honest, I can't remember. Okay. The time okay. Run, right. But, but I just thought, okay, you know what? I'm going to show, like, I can, I could do this. I'm so ready. Right. Yeah. So the whole week I'm training my socks off. I'm sleeping early. I'm eating well. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying, okay, you know what? Every single training I'm treating like it's a game. Right. Yeah. <laughs> game day is on Sunday, right? Yeah. Right. So I train all the way from Monday to Saturday night, right? Training's on Saturday night, right? Yeah. Fasha walks in <laughs> Saturday night, five minutes before training ends, right? <laughs> he goes, "Let me catch a few balls." He catches a few balls. Next day, the next day, <laughs> the next day, he starts. He saves a penalty. Gets mad of the match. I go, "What?" Like I can't even be mad, right? Oh my I'm god! I'm thinking like, hurts, no, yeah, no, yeah. it hurts. Like at that time, I was like, "Oh my god, I'm not gonna start tomorrow." Yeah. That day, he saves a penalty, puts a man of the match performance, and I think we win like one zero. Yeah. Like I was like, "What? What's going on?" So that's the funny stuff. I'm like, I'm thinking like, "What? What? Like?" So to be honest, like, uh, my time, I was young. I was kind of stupid. I mean, like. At the end of the day, like, you know, I was impatient. I think yeah. coaches knew more than me. I think that's that's part of being a young player, you know. You got to go through stuff like that to really learn, you know. As much as we all rate ourselves, you know, every footballer has an ego. You know, you think you're the best. You know, you want to be the best. Yeah. But sometimes you got to take a step back and be like, okay, this guy's better than me at this right now. Yeah. But that doesn't mean in, in, in six months, in, in three months, in, in a year, he's going to be better than me at yeah. that. You know, there's, there's so much progression for us to take as long as you have the right mindset, right? Yeah. And you know that that that, that day when uh, I got I, oh, I was so down. And you know, to be honest, like Fasha, he's he's a solid keeper. Yeah. Like uh, I tell you, like, he's a good keeper. Like that time when I, I, I was training him for a year and a half, bro. And like this dude, like I don't I don't know if he minds me saying this, I might get in trouble. But like he does, like he barely trains, right? Like he doesn't <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't train, right? But on game day, like he, he turns it up. He performs like he, <laughs> you could you could tell like this is a keeper that like knows his stuff. Yeah. I'm telling you, his technique. Superb. The way he kicks the ball, effortless, bro. Yeah. Saves the ball like a cat. Like, just yeah. boom, right? Like, but, like, for a guy his size, like, he's, he's yeah. super good. And yeah. he doesn't train. Like, he barely trains. I mean, I feel like you hear stories of that of players all the time, you know, Premier League and stuff like that. Yeah. Players, they're just worst trainers in the world. You know, yeah. they barely train. Like, I remember stories about Gareth Bale. Like, he he wouldn't, the day before a game, he just get a massage for, like, an hour yeah. straight. Like, he doesn't, like, people just, I think at that level, maybe. But some players are just talented enough, I guess, to the point where they can just turn it up on a match day and, and, and perform. But obviously, Honestly. I think personally, I wouldn't do that. You know, I, that's not my type of right. mindset. Like, I think I put in that hard work and it will repay itself on the weekend or or long term. You know. Yeah, and to be honest, like as a goalkeeper, I have like I've trained with a bunch of keepers. So, yeah. Like, Hassan. Yeah. Uh, I've trained with like um, you know, I just trained a bunch of yeah. keepers, right? And like, I realized that the uh, like when I was training with Fasha, yeah. Um, uh, the goalkeeper coach that we had, like, he knew. He knew Fasha was like a like, bad trainer. Not okay. Well, that's not, I'm not saying he's a bad trainer. Okay, okay but, but uh, what, he didn't turn it up for training. What he knew what his body needed. Yeah. Right. So before game day, he wouldn't he wouldn't really per se train. Like he yeah. catch a few balls and he's done. Right. Yeah. But when I trained to Hassan, like he would he would like go miles miles. Like he would do extra reps, extra sets. Yeah. If he draws the ball, he would do extra. Right. And I think every keeper is different. Yeah. And like I'm not I'm not dissing any of no, them. Everyone has their own personal style. Saying, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. So I'm not. So it, as a young keeper looking up. Uh, when especially when I was looking up at Warriors, I was like, yeah, like oh my god, this guy's like he's not he's barely training, but he's doing so good. Yeah. And like I go to Sailors, I'm like, this guy's training every day and he's amazing. And like it's it's confusing for me. Yeah. So this is different styles, you know. Not not everybody works the exact same way. Like yeah. I'm sure you have a different style to Hassan. You have a different style to Fasha. You have a different style to all the different keepers you worked yeah. with. You know what I mean? And and what makes you tick? Yeah. But okay, eventually you had you did leave Warriors. Yeah. You want to talk a little bit about that? And for the for the viewers at home that don't know Warriors, um sort of infamously in Singapore went bankrupt and uh, were unable to pay their players for a couple months. So, yeah. Ricky, you were one of those players. Yeah. As a young player, you know, this is the first time you're probably making money through football. What was it like to, to be like... Oh, I think there was a time... Overnight, you just, you're just you not getting any nothing in the bank. Yeah. No, it started first with like one month off, right? And yeah. I think like, uh, I kind of need my money, you know? I'm, you know, at that time I had a car. <laughs> yeah, I was. I don't know what I was doing. I was financially just irresponsible. Right? I know what he was doing with that car. If if, you, if you're in Singapore and you have a car, you know what you're doing with that car. <laughs> I was financially irresponsible with that car, right? So I got that car, uh, and I was at Warriors, and I was barely affording my fuel and my car park and my ERPs, right? So, <laughs> like, 
one month off, I'm like, okay, this is this is kind of a problem. But like, I text I text the GM, hey, I kind of need my money. Can I get it? Two months not there. I'm like, I don't even have my money anymore. Like, what yeah. am I going to do? Three months, I'm like, bro, I'm broke, right? Like, <laughs> you literally I'm broke. got nothing. You literally I, I got nothing. I need money, bro, right? It got so bad. Like, it was four months without pay. It got so bad. Like, we were just like trying to find ways to make money, bro, right? Like, literally me and Raihan, right? Because Raihan was the Warriors. Yeah. Me and Raihan, we would play like shooting games at, at, at the end of training. Like, we would be like, okay, we <laughs> if we win this, we get five dollars. If we lose this, we get five dollars, right? But like it got so bad, like we we and at least you guys were young at the time. I can't imagine for the senior players, people with families, exactly, people with that's, kids, that's people worst, with, with, with houses and mortgages and, and all this different stuff. When we had meetings, like th- these are points that they would bring up, you know? Yeah. They would be like, I have kids, I have family, like I have to do this, I have to support my family. And yeah. I felt so bad for them. Like to me, like I was barely. I, I, to be honest, I think I had a negative balance in my bank at one point. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna lie. I think I overdraft fees. Okay, right? it was right. so bad. Jeez. Right. So, yeah, that was that was that was uh, my time at Warriors. But to be honest, like the club, like it was it was full of like amazing players. Yeah, like, great players. I hear Ryan still talk about guys like Behe, you know, yeah. Gabriel Quack. Bro, all that. As, at, as at an 18 year old yeah. going into a club like that, you see right now sailors Gabriel Quack. Yeah. You see Karunizam. You see Jonathan Behe. You see Sahil Suhaimi. Right. Kenzo Fukuda. Right. All these players, right? Just like absolutely bossing, right? And every single training we had, it was just small side game, small side yeah. game, small side game. And the the atmosphere in there as well as like uh, get eat up. Uh, what's it called? Eaten or beaten? Was it eat or get eaten? What's it called? Something like I wish I wish like, I knew what you're talking either about. Either like you like like you just got either sink or swim. Enough, either you're good enough or you're not good enough. Like right? you sink or swim, yeah. Eat or be eaten, I think. Sure, we'll go with that. Eat, one. eat, eat or be eaten. eaten. Sure, I, is that no? I've never heard of that, but it's, it doesn't sound right. Okay, well, anyway, it's something like that, right? So it was it was just an intense environment, and everybody was broke. So yeah, so <laughs> I, I I assume you everybody guys, was you, playing with a different gravy. Yeah, <laughs> we, exactly. You guys got we're like, we're like we ain't got nothing in our bank account. So as that, so maybe that's why we did kind of well that season. I think we like went runners up for the FA Cup. Yeah, yeah, like you got Singapore, Singapore Cup. Yeah. All right, so Warriors was tough, but you made. Two appearances, 19 years old, keeper. You know, you don't see that much in Singapore. Yeah. But, I mean, shit was tough for you after that. Like, you couldn't even find a club. You want to yeah. share a little bit about that? Because I, I know you've told me this story before, but I think it's it's crazy that off the back of that, you you were kind of clubless. Most Warriors players were, and that just speaks to, to sort of the, the nature of Singapore football and how tough it is being a footballer in general. Yeah. Because, you know, everybody has one-year contracts. Except exactly. Except for some of these few people who yeah, exactly. like, are lucky to get in a five-year contract. Yeah. After that, like, we, we shut down. Then, like, I didn't have a club. I tried contacting like a few clubs. You know, I even told some of them I'll play for free. You know, because yeah. I just I just wanted to, like you needed it, you needed it. I just wanted to get in the SPL club. And at, at that time, I think like there was just it was COVID and it was hard and all the slots were filled up and Warriors shut down in the start of the season, so everybody would fill fill their spot. So at the end of the day, I think uh, uh, I think Sailors under twenty one. There I reached out or either I don't know what happened, but I went to the team, and yeah, and that was during the COVID year. So yeah, that was that. Then I think FAS helped out a bit with the salary. Yeah. So what they did was they, I think, oh, Sailors paid half, FAS paid half, FAS gave out some subsidies, some bursaries to us. So I think for for the ex Warriors players. Yeah, and okay. that was that. Then afterwards, I think I was at that I was at that dark place with you. Yeah. Where I I wanted to be in an SPL club. Yeah. But I can't be in an SPL club. Yeah. Because right? there's 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 no there's no, there's like no you, opportunity. You were, yeah. You, you want to go to the SPL club. NS and it was no had no connection. Things things outside of your control were stopping you. Yeah. yeah. And then afterwards, I think. Just somehow, I got a call from Sailors where they said that Dallas Steel were interested in loaning you, and so at this point you'd just been training with Sailors for a couple months. Yeah, you weren't even one, yeah, yeah, exactly. You weren't yeah. even anywhere near the first team, nothing no like way. that. But I was train, I was training with the first team. Yeah, and like honestly, training with the first team, it was it was like training with Hassan, like an idol of yours. It was no, to be honest, that first day, like when I was at Hassan, yeah. it was like. I was kind of, I was kind of like starstruck. Yeah. I was like, you had a semi, you had a semi when looking at him tr- catching balls. <sighs> <laughs> no, that's just gay, bro. All right, I don't know, but honestly, I, I I saw him, and this is like the keeper that everybody always talks about. Who's the best keeper in Singapore? Hassan. Who's this? It's Hassan. Hassan. Right. And now you see it up close and now personal. I'm, I go up to training, and there's three keepers, and I'm one of the three keepers that's training with Hassan. And I'm thinking, damn, that's crazy, right? Mama made it. Mama made it. <laughs> right. So straight away after I'm done training, I call my mom. Mom, guess who I just trained with today? Hassan. Right. Guess what just happened? He gave me a pair of gloves. Right. Sheesh. Right. And like afterwards, I realized like. I start training every single day with him. Yeah. I start improving a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. I start learning. He gave me so much advice, right? Like yeah. you would think like like people who made it, they they, they keep it to themselves. Yeah. Oh, he gave me so much advice. I, I think that's one thing about some senior players. Like you see senior players, like we'll talk about a little bit about this later. They're mm-hmm. toxic. You know, some guys that just 
they focus on themselves they just keep to themselves yeah. but I think the, the best teammates the captains like the leaders are, are those that impart yeah. their knowledge you know Hassan has played overseas he's played how many games for Singapore he's all yeah. this all this knowledge in him yeah. that he's willing to impart on younger players like that is for real. Is, is invaluable you know it's so so important as a young player to learn stuff from yeah. your seniors and you know like like I was I was a young guy and I was talking to him and the way that he talked to me it wasn't like um Demi- uh, like demeaning, diminishing you know? yeah, yeah. yeah like it wasn't like he was like talking down to me like he talked to me about like his his, uh, his uh, food restaurant like he talked to me about like what his plans are after like the he talked to you like a friend like an yeah, equal yeah and it was, like, it was crazy because the way that I looked at him was like some some like idol you know yeah. and, and honestly like that time like I said everything happens for a reason imagine if I joined that club like in uh, during that COVID period afterwards I would never have the chance to train with Hassan I would yeah. never have the chance to train with Hassan yeah Right, I would never have the chance to learn all the stuff that I learned from Hassan. Right, and now, like every time I see Hassan, I could, I could, I could greet him and I could yeah. say, "Hey, boss." Because so I think the the respect is mutual. You know, as 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 long as uh, the the person understands what your your aims are and yeah. you know you're you're there to learn from him and you're not yeah. you're not going about it in a bad way. You know, why would he ever act in in a disrespectful way to you? You know, yeah. respect is mutual. Yeah. I don't know if I did him wrong. What if I did him wrong? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> right. he he just being yeah, exactly. Nice Maybe. But yeah, so it was just in my time. So you mentioned that move to Ballastier. Big, big move in your career to yeah. finally go somewhere where you, you 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 mentioned in an interview not too long ago that you finally felt like it was a place where you were trusted. You know, the yeah. goalkeeping staff yeah. trusted you and that yeah. you, you were given an opportunity to play and you hoped that you repaid that trust. Yeah. So 2021, that was a big year for you. You know, you finally made a consistent run of games. And not only that, like you mentioned your, your your first two games of Warriors, you know, you conceded a lot of goals. But this time around, you know, less goals conceded, yeah. clean sheets, yeah. wins, recognition for your performances. What was that like? No, when I went to Ballastier, uh, Zafu Nizam was actually the first choice. Yep. And he's he, he, he's the captain. And I think there was like a streak where like he's been starting like for like two seasons in a row or something like that. But he has never not played a game. Yeah. Because he's the captain, right? Yeah. So literally first day I go into training and the guy goes, uh, Ricky, you're going to be second choice, right? I'm like, that's better than being under 21, right? Yeah. Like, I'm fine with that, right? Big time. That's right? why they loaned you, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, the season goes by and he plays games, he plays games. And then all of a sudden... He gets he uh, all of a sudden during training he doesn't go on the first team and Coach Marco says Ricky go to the first team and I'm like okay right then I start training good and then it, uh, a, a few training sessions go on go on go on and I realize the next game I'm starting yeah right and next game I'm starting is against uh, Gilang right and Coach Marco brings me to one side and tells me Ricky like uh, you're gonna be starting next game and and right at the moment I was like I was like kind of kind of kind of yeah. uh, nervous right I was like oh okay good right it was I wasn't like the pa- old Ricky where I was like. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, getting I was a bit like, like... You're, you're, you're was more like, calmed. No, I was a bit nervous, actually. Okay. I was more nervous, actually. Because I was oh. thinking, like, this is the performance that I gave last time. Yeah. 10 goals conceded in two, yeah. three, two, three games. How am I going to perform this one, right? Yeah. I, I, for just just quick FYI for, for listeners or viewers that don't understand. When, when you're in a professional football team, usually two, three days leading up to the game, you guys will sort of simulate, do 11 v 11 or, yeah. or tactical movement. So you'll have a rough understanding of who the first team is, who the second team is, given that there aren't any changes. So... <laughs> You don't necessarily need the coach to directly speak to you, but you sort of get an inkling. Yeah. Oh, okay, maybe this guy's not going to be ahead. starting, or this guy is going to be starting. So yeah. you kind of have to get psyched up in your head leading up to a game. Yeah. So I can imagine for a keeper as well, it's stress because you're replacing a national team goalie who's captain, who's been in how many games in a row? Like yeah. it mustn't have been easy yeah, to just was, yeah. step in and be like, yeah. okay, I got to fill these shoes. Right. So the game has the game starts, and we're playing against Maresh. We're playing against uh, who's now in the A League. Yeah, we're out. playing Maresh, Amy Reka, and. Uh, I forgot somebody, right? Yeah. Uh, great players. I think that game we lost. We lost four two. To be honest, I didn't play. I didn't play that game. It was. It was. I thought. I thought I did. I did. I did okay. okay. I did yeah. what I. I could. Yeah. Uh, had to do right. But anyways, I thought oh, that's it. That's it for like. Yeah. I can see. I didn't. I didn't do my best. Like I didn't get it. So I won't do it. Next game, I realized I'm starting again. Yeah. I'm going. Okay. This is this is where I make my mark. I know. Yeah. I feel confident after my last one, and I think that game I kept the clean sheet. No, I think that game we won. Five two, yeah. And I've, to me, that was my best game yeah. of my career so far. Yeah. And like, I, I was so proud of that game. And after that, my mom like texted me like I did so well. And the coaches texted me and boss Darwin uh, texted me and all this other stuff. And I was so happy that I was finally trusted. Yeah. Right. Then uh, the Zaifu news happened where yeah. he got sacked. Right. Yeah. Then I started playing, playing, playing. And I did well. I did well. I did well. And the next season starts, and the boss comes to me and says, "We want to sign you for next season." Yeah. 
And then so keep, you still had a contract with Sailors on the 21, yeah. but they wanted you on a full time. Yeah. Ballast yeah. After Ballast said, we want to sign you for next season. Your performance was decent. Your performance was good. We're good. Yeah. And from there, I got into the national team squad yeah. and all this type of stuff. So let's talk a little bit about that because going into 2022, you know, it was a big year for you. You know, back of 2021, big, like we mentioned, performances, SPL level performances, yeah. clubs wanting you, yeah. Ballast coming in and finally signing you full time. What was it like getting that first call up for, for the under 23s? Because you've been yeah. called up for Singapore in the past. Yeah. But. It was a sort of thing where last end of last year, October, you know, we had AFC under 23 qualifiers and yeah. you weren't in the squad. Yeah. That must have been frustrating for you. Man, it was so sad. And you know what? Like, I I, I gym with Champ a lot. Yeah. With Champion a lot. And like, these gym sessions are like... They get deep. They get they deep. Get, <laughs> they get so deep, bro. Right? Like, like we be gymming at like sometimes, like when, when it's off, like off season, preseason. We be yeah. gymming at like 2 a.m. Yeah. And I'm thinking like, man, like, why am I doing this, bro? Like, I'm not, I get the news, I'm not in the squad. Oh, man, like, I, what, what do I need to do? What do I need to do, yeah. right? And like, I'm with Champ and I'm thinking like, what do I need? And I tell him, I ask him for advice. Should I do this? Should I do that? Champ's just like, I don't know. He's, honestly, he just, he, he just supports us. Honestly, I, sometimes I don't even really listen. He's yeah. just there to tell me things. And yeah, like, he's, just, he's just echoing your thoughts. Right? right? And he makes it like, he's like, <laughs> what should you be doing? And like, he, just, he just like repeats what I said, I think sometimes. And, and, and sometimes I, I find the answers, whatever, right? Anyway, when I finally got in, I was so happy. Yeah. It was like, I think when I, so remember it was, it was a selection week. Yeah. We had, we had a oh, training camp first. It was, yeah. yeah. It was training camp. So I haven't been selected yet. I just got called up. So yeah. uh, the job's not done, right? Yeah. The job's not finished. No, but I mean, even like, finished. like you mentioned champ answering your questions, like we, as your boys, you know, myself, Raihan, yeah. Harish, Jacob, Ilhan, all of us are, are, are tight with you and we're, we're in the setup with yeah. you. So when we see you at a training camp, like that first training camp, that was the first time I trained with you like yeah. properly on the pitch. Yeah. I was rooting for you. Yeah. Everything I saw you do, I was like, okay, I want Ricky to do well. When I saw you weren't doing well, I was like, fuck, come on, Ricky, yeah. do better. Yeah. I know you can do better. Respect, respect. Exactly. Yeah. So you, you made the cut. Let's talk about that. So when I when I made the cut, uh, my mom's been waiting like the whole time. Because honestly, I forgot when, when they tell the selection, right? They usually tell on the last day before we fly. Yeah, something like right? that, yeah. So the whole time I'm like thinking, oh my God, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it. And the whole time, every single day after training, my mom, Ricky, did you make it? Did you make it? Did you make it? Haven't told me yet. Haven't told me yet. So the day when they said, Coach Nazi goes, okay, uh, you guys want to hear the good news or the bad? You know how you went here? Yeah. You remember? You yeah. hear the good news or the bad news? Good news is all of you guys over here are flying, right? All right. Okay. Just just some uh, some background info. A bunch of people got COVID, so it got yeah. to the situation bunch where we, we, here, yeah. players didn't even get cut because yeah. they were so desperate. Yeah. So pretty much I didn't, I couldn't get cut because... Uh, no, no. Keeper, a keeper oh, did yeah, get cut. Oh, yeah. A keeper did get cut. Okay, yeah. So fair so enough. Yeah, no, you, you I didn't got picked. Yeah, right, exactly. Okay, yeah. So he goes, good news. Everybody here is going to make it, right? And I'm so happy, right? As well as I just played, like went through my mind, right? I finished training. I'm on my phone with my mom. Mom, I didn't make the team. <laughs> no. Mom, I didn't make the team. Mom goes, oh, Ricky, it's okay. No, it's fine. Look, it's okay. And I start hearing tears. No. She brother, started, you can't tell she me She started you did having that like her. tears in her voice. He's like, God, it's okay, Ricky. You just gotta, you just gotta work it. It's okay. Next one is God's plan. You'll do this. I'm like, psych, I made it. Ah, then she it. cried again. She oh was like, my God. She was I would have like, slapped the shit like, out of you when you got home. She was like, what's wrong with you? And then she got so happy. She was like, oh my God, you actually make it. And then she's like, when are you flying and all that sort of stuff? So yeah, that was that was a, like a core memory for me now. I can't imagine how your mom must have felt in the moment. Move, right, to be honest. Yeah, big time but for like, sure. Like this is the, probably the, one of the best moments of your career so far. You share it with her. Because I always, I always give it back. Because I always get back. Like I, every time I relay messages, yeah. it always seems to be bad, bad news. Yeah. You know, I didn't get this club. I didn't make the cut. I didn't do this. So when I hear that she kind of expected it, she was like, "Oh." But I told her, and she was so happy. Yeah. So that's that. All right. So we've talked a lot about your mom, but this experience in Cambodia was something big for you as well. You know, going to the tournament, and I understand that's where your dad lives, right? Yeah. So this is the first time you yeah this this mar this past March yeah that you'd seen him in a while during COVID I didn't I didn't yeah. see him yeah so I saw him the first time for like in two three years and I was and you're away with the national team you know it's a big thing yeah. probably one of the biggest achievements to your yeah. career to date how do you feel that moment went you know okay granted you didn't play any games but still to be representing your country oh, you know man, it was so it's emotional. it's a it's literally a one in a million type type situation so you know it's you're one of the best of the best at your age and your position. How is it like, you know, sharing that moment with your with your dad, with your mom? Like, yeah. how do you look back on it? Yeah, so my mom's watching from Singapore and my dad's on the stands in Cambodia, yeah. right? And to be honest, I didn't, because it was my first, like, call-up, call-up. I didn't know how to act. Like, I didn't want to be, you know, can I talk to my dad? Yeah. I mean, I, 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 you didn't want to push the limits. I didn't want to push my limits. Like, we're sitting on the bench. Should I even be talking to my dad? Should I just be sitting here, right? But it was just so emotional. Like, I told you, man, like, I was standing next to you. I already felt like tearing, tearing yeah. up, bro. I was like, I'm so proud of us, right? And, like, to all the times where I've, like all the struggle like I felt like it doesn't matter if I was not playing 
national yeah. anthem right now, I was like, man. No, yeah, seeing, I mean, I'm, I don't know how you feel, but for me, when I'm seeing the national, national anthem, bro, like, goosebumps, I'm, bro. I'm not a, a, every a, single a teary time. eye type of guy, but sometimes when I be singing it, I'm like, goosebumps every single I, time. I can't pronounce every single word right because I, I don't got my, my Malay down like that, but. I'm like the bursa ru and bursa tu. I get confused with that one too. Kinda, yeah, but I just be like, it's such an emotional thing. It I is, think bro. you stand there, you 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 deep it that you're representing your entire country. That is crazy. Yeah. The entire country of what five six million yeah. people, and you're one of the the eleven, yeah. the the twenty, the twenty eight, whatever yeah. it is that stood there. It's crazy. It's That's crazy. crazy. And you know, I'm I've always like envisioned as a kid to be standing like while the camera's like being pointed. Around. Yeah. To be standing on that thing. I've never got the chance yet because I've always been on the bench. Coming up, coming up. Don't but worry about I swear, it. When the time comes, you might, I might be like trending because I'm like, let me see tears coming all over here, you know? Look, everybody makes fun if of you. No. If you're dripping tears before a game, I mean, it's. it's, it's Honestly, people will make fun of me, right? Yeah, people make no, fun I me, think. But like, yeah. to be honest, right? You know like, what it means to you. Like, I don't like, I, want, I want to talk about one guy, Ryan Sanizao. Shout out you. Like, you're a beast. But when it comes to the national anthem, this guy is shouting as loud yeah. as he can. I'll be stood next to him. I'm just turn around like, what the hell? Like, I mean, he's got so much pride and I love it. But, like, it's crazy how loud he is. So he's in a national team right now, bro. Yeah, exactly. Okay, respect. Bro, yeah, 100%. There's a common yeah. team, right? Yeah. There's a common team. I'm, th- I'm saying, bro, I'm telling you, bro. So you just got to sing it a little bit louder. Who's coming maybe, for you? Maybe. <laughs> I, I, I do be a little bit quiet, though. So that was a big moment for you. National team. First time you got not called out per se but at this level you know the highest level so far then you come back to Ballast here you know we talked about you were on you were on the high you're on the highest yeah, of highs you know going into this season Nashua and team, yeah. we were talking about it in Cambodia you were talking about big expectations for Ballast here not only did the team not have a great start but you individually you know you didn't have a great start this yeah. season it sort of tailed down a little bit and you want to share a little bit more about that and, and what's going on yeah so like you know like we mentioned before, like I'm trying to keep it as professional as yeah. I can because honestly like the club has helped me so much and like when I was at the highest of highs, they were a big part of it. But, you know, just, I guess just things didn't work out at the end of the day, you know. At the end of the day, like, I talked to I talked to the boss, and the boss was so understanding. Like, yeah. he, he understood, like, what it, what, what, it, what it meant to me and how bad I wanted it. And to be honest, I don't think he was, he was like, ha- satisfied with, like, letting me go. Yeah. And all this other stuff. But at the end of the day, I think it was just something that I needed to do. Um if it was the bad decision or wrong decision, I don't know. Personally, yeah. it could be the worst decision I've ever made in my life, right? Yeah. Uh, to be honest, like, even the coach. You live and learn. The goalkeeper coach called me like that day. He was like, uh, are you sure you're not making the wrong decision? Like, yeah. are you sure this is not like a heat of the moment thing? Yeah. And I'm like, I told him like, you know, I talked to my family and my friends and like, to be honest, like. You reach you reach your boiling point, your breaking point. Yeah. No, it's, it's, yeah, it's more of like, you know what Gary Vee said, like if you have two choices, just choose one and yeah. forget it. Like, what can uh, you do with the other one, right? So I already chose this one. Yeah. So I was like, is, is, is I already made it. What's gonna happen next if I don't get a team? If, yeah. if I don't ever go to SPL, it's, it's just just my thing, isn't it? Like that's what I what I chose. But, but I, you you back yourself in your decision. You you don't have any regrets. I can't have any regrets. Yeah. If I have any regrets, I'm gonna just like to be honest. Sometimes I'm even thinking like, did I make the right decision? Yeah. But Obviously, you know it's it's a big decision to make. You know to to terminate your contract and to to the move on in like we mentioned before. You know Singapore football is so volatile. You know, so, so it's difficult to get a team. It's difficult when you're yeah. you're a free agent, but. I think you've shown enough promise, you know, as a young keeper with, like we mentioned, you, you size. See that. Yeah, you see size. That. There's plenty of things that are going for you, and as long as you know you keep the same mindset, of working hard, surrounding yourself with good people, and then you just stay, st- stay focused. You know, like it's it's easy to get distracted. We all know that, but as long as you stay focused, you know, you have big things coming up. You have good people around you. You've got yeah. good connections. Like we know, football is all about connections. Yeah. I don't see any reason why why you can't go forward. But okay. I want I want to come back a little bit to that because. You and I have have discussed this at length. You know, we 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 know behind the camera and behind behind what's been going on. I feel like maybe you have to, to to give a little bit of background on that because it's it's to the people outside they might just see why would this young keeper terminate his contract? You know, he he should be just happy, you know, being on the bench and stuff like that. But I think yeah. there's more to it that I yeah. think you can share. Because uh, to be honest, uh, like I don't know, man. Like it was it was it was such a like depressing moment for me bro like you were I, down no i was down. i was yeah. so down bro like i i couldn't even like like i couldn't even like get in like not even like and i don't know what it was because you know like at the end of the day I, I just felt like i had to do it because i'm going to ns yeah right and if i come out of ns and like something something happens and like you have an opportunity somewhere yeah, and it's also like uh, I just I couldn't go through what I went through this season. You yeah, know? it was it was tough. But okay. at the end of the day, you know I respect the club. The club did so much for me, and you know I wish them all the best. And maybe if I don't know, maybe I might I might 
end up with them again. So yeah, you never. It's, it's it's not a closed door. You know yeah, what I mean? Never, yeah. I think I, it's I, I told, I told, yeah. I told Darwin anyway. Uh, boss, boss. I call him boss. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I told him boss that like you know, he like I, no way sh- am I like saying like I'm never gonna come back. Yeah. Like, I'm telling you like this is just like how it is right now. There, there's 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 good people and there's obviously people that that, yeah. that made your your experience more difficult. Yeah. And you know, if you know, you know. Yeah, exactly. If you know, you know. And um, all I'm gonna say is, you know, players, you know, you, you need to stand up for yourself at some point, you know. Yeah, for sure. And I think, and, I uh, think you need uh, to take your, your your future and you and empower yourself and make yeah. make decisions that are the best for you, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. But looking back on it, you know, we we know what go- went on, but you think you could have handled things a little bit differently? How you how you sort of went about the situation? What things maybe you could have improved on as as a person, as a player? To be honest, like I said, no regrets, bro. No regrets. Like I, I don't know what I, I don't know what I should have done. Maybe I yeah. could have been, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Nothing. To be honest. All right, let's get into a bit more lighthearted stuff. You know, we talked a little bit before the show about some <laughs> funny stories you had. So I want to start off with what, what would you say the funniest SPL story? Oh, you know, in, in your years of playing in the Singapore Premier League, the funniest thing you've seen, the funniest thing you've experienced. Like what 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 sort of weird and wacky stuff that people might not understand goes on in a professional football environment? Because at the end of the day, we may be professionals, but we're still normal people. You know, we still get up to some goofy, stupid shit sometimes, and we are kids at heart. You know, when we're playing football, and we're just having fun. Bro, I'll be honest with you. Oh, crap, I didn't even think about this. Uh, okay, let's talk a little bit about something that I noticed from you is that you love your shooting games. You mentioned it a little bit about you and Raihan, yeah. but you are a nuisance when it comes to your shooting games because yeah. for, for those that don't know, Ricky basically will get five balls, you know, and he'll, he'll make a bet with you. If you can score three out of five... 100 plus, uh, 100 plus. 100 plus, yeah. $5, $10. You, you pick the amount, maybe. Yeah. So he'll ping these balls to you. You got two touches. Your touch has got to be, be within the, the D outside the penalty box. Yeah. And you got to score. That's all you got to do. Sounds like a simple game. Yeah. How much money would you say you've made or lost from this game in the four or five years you've probably been playing it? Uh, I, don't, I don't bet in footballing environment, okay? I'm professional. Okay. So we play 100 pluses. Okay. Right? How many 100 pluses? How many 100 pluses? I would say maybe around... I think 500, 100 pluses. Up or down? Up. You think overall you are up 500, 100 up pluses? 500. And you know who has a lot to credit with that? Ryan Stewart. Right, Ra- Ryan Stewart is a bad player at this game. He's yeah, a he's, bad player. No, okay. When at Warriors, he was atrocious. Okay. But I'm going to be honest with you, as time went by, he improved. Okay. You, you yourself, you, you talk a lot. You yourself ain't, 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 ain't got too much sauce in that. <laughs> you know who's criminally underrated at who? the game? Who? Bro, I don't know. Like, that time when I was at Sailors, right? Yeah. Harris, Harris Harun, yeah. he came in for, uh, he came in uh, from JDT. Yeah. And I think he was doing some rehab. So he was okay. injured. Yeah. The man was injured, right? Just doing some training with you guys. man was injured. We didn't play the game. Yeah. But I think he was next to Kafiza and Kafiza said, do some shots, right? Yeah. Dude wasn't even on the D. Dude was behind the D, right? He was nailing every single shot top quarter. I'm not even joking. I don't even know how he did. I think he was using his left foot, if I'm not wrong. Okay. All right. He's a defender, right? Now he's a defender, yeah. I played against like, John uh, Behe. Yeah. I played against, uh, I think, uh, Gabriel Quack. Yeah. I played against, like, Saiful Akbar and other yeah. people. Big right? strikers, big attackers. Yeah. Johan, Iksan, yeah. right? Bro, he was the he was like, <laughs> crazy, bro. Like, I don't know what he's doing in defense, right? He should be playing, like... like he should like, be number 10, he should be false number, 9. Because the way that he shot that ball was effortless. But I think he used his left and he was injured. I looked stupid. And that was the first time me meeting him. He probably thinks I'm the worst keeper in the world. Right? <laughs> the way that he just, like, was, like... The ball was, that. like, you're just looking left and right. Yeah. And, like, just watching them go into yeah. the back and of the I net. I was, like, God, like, I just heard, like, Who, who would have known? Who would have known? Just absolute baller, scorer, like, finisher. <laughs> Crazy, bro. Man. Yeah, so that's that. Um, Ryan, yeah, he's, he's all right. Oh, yeah. Not bad. I, I, yeah, you're, you're right. I, should, I shouldn't be talking too much. I, I'm I'm notorious for a, a lack of shooting ability. You, I have Harris, to or can turn it down a bit. We, we we do the running, we do the dirty work, the tackling. We Honestly, don't do the, the flamboyant. That's, that's all, that's, that's we, we, we don't do, do the, the the shooting and yeah. uh, any of the crazy stuff. Jen is not bad at it, to be honest. For a guy who doesn't play football, he wants some. He wants some hundred pluses off me. I mean, not to be that guy, but you know, everybody has won a couple mm. hundred pluses off you. Mm. Let's be if real. you're negative, you don't talk. Okay. All right, if you're negative, all right, you don't talk. Right. If you still owe me thirty hundred pluses, you don't talk. You don't. Okay. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I think you paid it. Jacob Mahler, I just want to do this for you. I've heard many stories that um, 100 pluses are owed to you by a certain Ricky Kimura over time. Oh, um, my, my my brother Ricky Kimura. I have a lot of 100 pluses, Jacob Mahler. All uh, right, we won't we won't get into that, but um, at some point you at, at, at some point at some point Jacob. Some point, I told him back. one day I'll, I'll get him a yacht. You get him a yacht. Yeah, yacht like PJ. That. You got it all under yeah. wraps. Let's let's do post playing career. I think that's a good one because 
you've been getting into football manager recently. Yeah. You've been doing some coaching since um, yeah. your, your, your time with Ballester came to a yeah. close. Let's talk a little bit about that and, and what it means to you and w- w- what the gaffer Ricky would be up to and what his style is. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, I'm still a long way from that, in it? But, you know, goalkeepers, Nuno Esper. Nuno, is, Nuno he was a goalkeeper, yeah. right? I don't know, I've been doing my full manager thing. Yep. QPR, brought them to the Premier League. <laughs> I don't know. But, yeah, something that maybe I want to yeah, do. What about you? I, I don't know. I think I'm the... I think you'll be a good manager. I think you're open. Just like talk to everybody. Yeah, I think I don't know. Managing is never. I mean, I'm st- we're still young as uh, young as hell. Obviously, I mean, I've enjoyed my time on FIFA on on different games. You know, being a manager. But in terms of day to day, I feel like I'm the type of person that wants control over everything. You know, I'm a very. Exactly. But manager. I think that's a. You can't be like that as a manager. You know what I've Isn't that what a manager does? No, controls you know, over everything. I feel like as a manager, you have to have people that you you delegate to, and you have to have smart staff around you if you really want to be be a proper manager. And you need to believe in your staff. And obviously, I I, I can do that, but. I don't know. I feel I feel like I'm a very individual person, you know, when it comes to like projects. Like even this podcast, like I like having control over every single little detail, you know what I mean? I like to 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 do the setup of the audio, yeah. the video, the the post production, the, the the social media. Like I like to do everything. Yeah. And although it may not be of the highest quality, you know, as as Champ reminds me and has, has shown me, there's, there's there's a lot of error in my ways, but no, I think as a manager you kind of need to be able to 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 delegate and I to work you. with other people, you, you know what I mean? Right. By the way, for those who don't know, Champion, he's uh, he's the owner of Sheet Geek. One Sheet point, Geek, TikTok, one point, one point two, celebrity. 2.1? 2.4? 2.2. 2. 2.2 million people. You know how many people 2.2 million people are? That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. That's probably more than anybody's going to watch well, this well, podcast. I, I'll drop the Sheet Geek link in the bio. Two you know, check it out. If you guys million, ever have any bro. questions about how to use Microsoft Excel, Microsoft, Sheet Geek. 2.2 million, bro. That's stupid. That's not, that, you don't think how crazy that is? And he's not just talented That's a population Excel. of a country, bro. That's fact. He's not just popular, um, talented XL. You know, Ricky. If you, I'll, 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 sh- I'll have the Instagram video up here right now. Oh, he's great. If you're watching on YouTube, insane hype video that Chan made for Ricky. You know, I remember watching. It, I was like, what the hell? Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. gas. Like, to be makes, honest, it made Ricky look so good. Like I, I, I seen Ricky in person. I was like, this guy's not that good. But that video, <laughs> it gassed him up, bro. It gassed him up. Bro, it looks so good. He, he got that. That video got him a lot of job offers. I'm just saying. You swear, Rory, bro. Rory wanted. Okay, to, yeah. He wanted to get in with him. Not everybody's always talking about like, hey. Bro, the off season, off season video this year, champ. You know. All right, all right. But um, that that just reminded me of this little thing I want to talk about. You on social media, you know, you, you and I both love a little Instagram post. But I look at yours and I think you know you have a lot of attention to detail. You know, you like to to be in control of of things like your TikTok and sort of this. You're you're active on social media. How important do you think it is as a player nowadays to be in control of your image? Yeah. And um, and to to have that on top of your 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 on the pitch stuff. You know. Uh, to be honest, um. I'm not really up there like with the with the high followers and all this type of stuff. Yeah. But you know, I feel like social media does play a lot. Like yeah. it does, it does. Like I realized after like uh getting into like podcasts and all this type of stuff, I realized that like fans start paying more attention. I realized like recently, like when I don't play games, people will comment, Why isn't Ricky playing games? Yeah. But I'm sure they're, they're invested in you. But I'm sure they wouldn't know who I was like like a few years ago yeah. if I didn't post up. You know? Yeah. Right, so I think like that that plays a lot, but yeah. obviously you do talking on the pitch. Yeah, of course. Right, but I'm saying that like that plays a lot. Like, yeah. do you think, you reckon like, okay, yeah, I think that's fair enough. No, I, I ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> I was gonna be like, do you reckon like Neymar would be as popular? Ah, uh, come on, come on. As popular as he is, yeah. If he didn't have the social media behind him, or Odell Beckham. No, I think you, you'd see there are loads of big athletes that are just off social media. You know, they're not on social media, so yeah. maybe their profile isn't as big. And you know, so by the way, do you guys see that Jacob one? By the way, that this one. Come on. The Harper Bazaar, you didn't see it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I this saw one. that. Oh my god, it's talk about Jake. social media right yeah. there. Raihan, Raihan's had a stinker. Harris as well. Harper's Bazaar, he did not. Oh, I, I know it's it's a did different you see style. That, the Harris one, the what, 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 some like headset something or like headphones. JBL, like, JBL, like, yeah. So I mean, we we talk, but I would I would do Harper's Bazaar, JBL, and I was in a heartbeat. Come on, man. I wouldn't do that acting. No, no, no. I wouldn't. No I wouldn't. I wouldn't do this. If they told you to do it, you wouldn't do it. No, like that's I wouldn't. Cap, do, I wouldn't cap. look at the that's camera cap. and go that's like cap. this. If Harper's Bazaar came out say, "Ricky Kimura, we want to do a feature on you, and you got to do exactly what we tell you to do," you are groveling on your knees and being yes, a hundred percent. Come on now, you. I know I you're say, a model. I would say, can we do it without the, the flick of the lips? Okay, all right. And my all lips right. ain't juicy like Jake Kamala. Man, no man got some juicy uh, lips. Okay, all right. I won't. No comment. No comment. Scrumptious wet lips, bro. Jeez. Hey, you but, know, talking about Raihan, right? Okay, yeah. Raihan, yeah, bro, dude. By the way, shout out to him. Yeah, shout out to him. Right? What, what, what do you think about that move? I think he's big. I mean, we've obviously, his, his closest boys have known about it for a while. I think he's going to really show that he deserves to be not only in the national team picture, but in that starting 11, you know, 
now that he's overseas, you know, he has that certain level of, of credibility that, you know, maybe you don't have at Young Lions. So yeah. I think he's going to go on and do big things, yeah. you know. It's a different style, different challenge, but I know he's up for it. Yeah, no. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. I think he's going to bang in a few goals. I think, I think you know, depending on what position he plays, he definitely, you know, he has it in him. We know he, he's got a couple goals yeah. already this year and in the past. But yeah. I want to talk to you a little bit about another boy in Thailand, uh, your boy Iksan. Yeah. You and him back in the day, no cap. I know that's still going on. What is your craziest Iksan Fandi story? Crazy. Experience being with the, the main man himself. Craziest Iksan. The celebrity. Craziest Iksan Fandi story, yeah. Because, I mean, I've hung out with Harris before, and even though he's not on the same level, obviously we know in terms of followers, but, like, pe- seeing people come up for photos, seeing people do that sort of stuff, people, like, screaming, like, oh, my God. What 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 is the Iksan Fandi experience like being out with him, being being out and uh, out and about with him? No, nah, you know what? Like, to be honest, every time I go out with Ix, yeah, right, there's bound to be like somebody trying to take a pic with him. Yeah. It's it is always somebody that like you know what was crazy? Okay, I'll tell you one story crazy story, right? Okay. This dude is like is like so popular, right? Okay. That time when we went we went to a beach club. We went to a beach club. Me Jacob, Raihan, X, and I think Saul was there, yeah. right? Shout like, out Saul. Shout out Saul. Saul. We're we're at the beach club and we 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 just finished we just finished our time at the beach club. So we we're, we're walking out. We're walking out. X sends in the back or like in the I don't know where. We're walking out, right? Oh no, I'm I'm behind X We're walking out. Somebody passes by us. I think it's a girl, right? X glasses at it. <laughs> no, but like Yeah, like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's okay. not it's not Yeah, like, yeah, it's nothing like that. Time, yeah. Right? We move on. <laughs> we move on. We go inside the car right as we sit down. Hey, Silla, I just got a DM from that girl, yeah? No Who? way. Who did you just get a DM from? That girl that we just walked past. That girl that just walked past and looked at you for 0.02 seconds just DM'd you all the No nowhere. way. He says, yeah. Bro, it's normal. Yeah, he for, said, yeah, like it's nothing. It's normal for him, bro. We be going to like food centers, right? Hey, did I see you at the Newton Food Center? We were there for like one minute. Hey, were you here? Were you there? It was crazy. <laughs> bro, I went to Bali with him. People recognized him in Bali, bro. Not even in Singapore. I was at Bali and people started DMing him. Oh, you're in, oh, you're in Bali? Oh, my God. And it's not just him, bro. It's his whole family. Yeah, like, that's true. Enough. It's next right? level. It's next right? level. Like, that's how I went to, uh, went to Ra- I sent Raihan off. Right? Yeah. And uh, Coach Fandiyama was there. Yeah. Right? He was wearing a mask. Right? I think, like, nobody, like, I wouldn't recognize, right? Yeah. Like, we're wearing masks. Bro, everybody knew who he was. Nah, he's different though. He's pick. he's Singapore's goat. He is single. Shout but out nobody, Coach Fandi. Shout nobody out Coach Fandi. Nobody knew what like he had a mask. Like, yeah. I, I, how could you like recognize someone like? Oh, that's crazy, bro. Ilhan as well. Bro. Yeah. No, I mean all the entire Fandi family, bro. They're crazy. They're crazy. Like the the, the fame is is unreal. It's crazy. But, it's crazy. You know, one day one day, you know, I mean, I I mean, I don't, I don't aspire to have fame like that. But obviously, it must be nice. You know, the stuff that comes with it. You know. And that's yeah. being their being their friend. Like sometimes you look at it and you're like, damn. Yeah. You want a bit of that, you know, the yeah. social media attention, the the the, the opportunities that come from yeah. it. Obviously, like we said, you got to do. You're talking on the pitch. But and this, he does. this stuff. Yeah, exactly. Oh, come no, on. He's, he's on fire. Yeah. Ixan is on fire. Ilhan he, he, as well. He Ilhan, recently, they're all killing he, it. He made a joke recently where he said that uh, he's got more clean sheets than me in the for the national team. I mean, which is true. Yeah, yeah. That's not. <laughs> which is true. But, but it's like it's getting to my nerve, bro. <laughs> yeah. You guys, you're coming soon. You're coming soon. Don't worry about it, brother. Don't worry yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that would be a, one of my crazy stories. I mean, I'm, I I hang out with him often, and these yeah. these things that like you you experience, and like sometimes like you got people asking to take pictures. Yeah. But I'm the one that's taking the picture. <laughs> right. I'm like, yeah, don't worry, I got you. Now, nah, Ilhan, I remember this. This happened the other day. Ilhan, somebody asked Ilhan to take a photo with me. No, no, oh. as in Ilhan took the picture or somebody, and I was like, How are you sure? How the have turned. I was like, are you sure this guy, what, you want a picture of me? How did him? Ilhan feel? I don't know. He seemed fine. You know, he seemed gay. Like, he, I think he laughed it off, so he must have been funny for him, but no, <laughs> that was, that was, it was just a weird moment for me. I was like, yeah, why, I, why, I why see, does this guy want a photo of me? I see a lot of people trying to take pics with you now. Huh? Nah, 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 chill. It ain't like that. Nobody, nobody wants no pics, but. You big now, huh? Nah, nah, nah. Speaking of uh, a big, let's uh, end with a big bang. Um, I want to talk to you about NS. Oh, no, I just okay. already, champion over here is in the middle of NS. You're about to experience. You're about to embark on this on this crazy journey. Are you looking forward to it? Are you, are you have any fears? Any sk- any any thoughts about it? To be honest, I'm way too old for NS. Like, yeah. look at me. I look like I'm 35. Bro, you're gonna have to shave your beard. You're gonna to look sh- like a baby. I have to shave my ain't, beard. Ain't no more drizzy, 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 my, r- drizzy exactly, Ricky, bro. I, I'm gone. I don't even know what what NS is like. And to be honest, like I've got some few few mates who've told me like some things to take note of while I'm over there. Try, try not to be too much. Try yeah. Not to talk too much. Try to be low key. Yeah. Act blur or whatever the thing yeah. is that they say. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's that's my journey for NS. So hopefully, just, just try move, to get back on the pitch as soon as possible. One. Yeah, 
and like maybe do a right hand, right hand. I don't know. He finesses his way up and I don't know if I can say this. Probably not. Huh? It's fine. It's fine. Because no, because he was he was there during COVID. Yeah, yeah. COVID, yeah, yeah, COVID, yeah. It COVID. It helped him so out massively. You know, just it, everything, st- everything was easier. Yeah. Yeah. So he just had to stay at home. So yeah. maybe I gotta do that. What like start a whole new pandemic maybe? Oh jeez. <laughs> no, I, mean, I think NS is one of those things that it, you come out stronger from it because like I think when you get football taken away from you for a bit, you realize how much you miss it and um, how much Man. you how much you want to be back on the pitch for and competing tough again. As well. You gotta be yeah. sharp, you know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So hopefully we'll see you back in the back in the mix soon and 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 doing your thing on the pitch. You know. Appreciate it, bro. I think for without a doubt, you know there are fans in SPL, you know internationally that that they're rooting for you and know that you have potential yeah. to be one of the next goalies in, in Singapore. Hopefully, you know, hopefully. you got the size, you got good hands, you got different things. You know, you know what you need to work on. Yeah. And uh, going forward, uh, I hope to see maybe on the same team again. No, bro. Soon, maybe. Yeah. All right. I wanna thank you for coming on today, my brother, my brother, my brother. We'll see you there. All right. All right. See you soon. All right, viewers and and listeners, thank you so much for joining me on the third episode of the Stuck In Podcast. I want to thank Ricky again, and uh, I want to thank our lovely guest champion for joining us, and uh, peace out. Peace out.